Hello everyone, I'm Alan from Technology Moments and today we're gonna share with you not only what you get in terms of hardware when you buy one of these great Amazon Fire TV devices, but also what you get in terms of usability and interactivity of this awesome little device. We have seen the great Roku in action too and we love it. Which to choose is up to you. If you choose Fire TV, you won't regret it for sure. We have used Echo devices for more than six years and I think our experience may enlighten you if you're planning on buying an Amazon Alexa device and in this case those oriented to the entertainment, the Fire TV Cube or Fire TV Stick. Both are excellent at what they do. The only difference you might find is the speed at which they work. Even though Prime Video is widely available, for example, in the country we're in, Fire TV itself is not directly sold here and is theoretically not supported. However, that doesn't prevent us from using it here. The same thing happens to some models of the Echo Show. You'll get, for example, very well packaged the usual stuff and a little bit more. You'll get the cube itself, the setup instructions, the voice-enabled remote control with AAA batteries included, the power adapter, the infrared range extender, and a micro USB network adapter compatible with newer Echo Show devices. This comes very handy as it plays a very important role, especially for 4K playback, which may require not only good bandwidth, but a very stable network connection. Manufacturer claims it needs about 15 megabit per second for you to have a very good quality stream at 4K. The 15 watt power adapter is more than enough for this little device that in normal operation mode consumes around 2 watts of power and it raises a little bit for streaming and decoding UHD videos. However, one thing missing in the box is the HDMI cable. And for new or maybe inexperienced users, a good cable is not just grabbing one from the cable drawer you might want to get a good quality HDMI 2.0 high-speed cable. If you already have a 4K device connected to your TV and it works OK, at least start with that one, as a poor cable may limit your experience with the Fire TV Cube and you'll not be able to get the most out of the great experience that 4K streaming has for you. Listing all tech differences of this device with others is really not our objective here with this video. It's enough to say that it is powerful, quality made and above all, well engineered. The glossy finishing reminds us of the early versions of the Echo devices which actually look very nice. Try to place it where it can be reached by the remote and also the cube reaches out to other IR equipment it can manage such as sound systems, amplifiers and more. We have been using this unit for over two months and we are really happy with what we've seen and experienced so far. Let me show you why, from initial configuration to normal use, for the typical end user this device just may be the right choice for you. This is the TV gear we're gonna initially use just for setting it up and testing. And even though this is a desktop Samsung 4K monitor, fantastic by the way, we're not gonna use it for our real test purposes as TV have certain technical characteristics you must comply with in order for you to be able to stream in 4K with high dynamic range and a good frame rate. Also, copyright protection is a great factor too. Let's connect the HDMI. This network adapter, even though I plan on using it, I will not have it connected, as I will connect it first through the Wi-Fi, as the location where I'm at right here does not have such a strong Wi-Fi signal. So it might be a very good experiment for many of you too. If you have, for example, previously used Echo Show devices and have agreed for Amazon to store your Wi-Fi credentials, as well as having the cube sent to you linked to your account, the experience of setting it up will be literally a hands-free operation and will be ready to use once it connects to the Wi-Fi automatically and updates to the latest firmware. Another good option is to use the Fire TV app to set up your device. The first step will be pairing the remote. If you just place the batteries, it'll quickly find it. If not, just press the home button for a few seconds and right after that, press the play pause button, select the language and connect to your Wi-Fi. It may update some quick features and asks you for an Amazon account, which you can very quickly link following the on-screen instructions it will automatically continue to the next screen. Again, it'll ask you if you want to save time with the next device you order from Amazon. All these steps that we have followed up to now could have been bypassed if you had ordered your Fire TV linked to your account with Wi-Fi credentials. We're gonna skip this step, but it is very important for many of us with kids at home to know that it is available. You can choose your streaming services at this point or at a later moment. I skip now this step and the main reason is that it is my preference to install the apps once it has been completely updated. I also skip the Alexa peripheral setup also so we can learn how to manually do it at a later time. If you're not familiar with Fire TV Cube, you may not notice that this is not the latest version of its firmware. Actually, it turned out it needed three more updates, a process that took a few more minutes. 
and even after getting the current user's interface, it needed another small update. Nothing that bothers me really, as such updates are something necessary to keep us safe. We were then very quickly able to link to all our streaming accounts, process for which the remote app might come in handy, as you'll be able to type usernames and passwords quickly. Of course, most streaming services will let you link to your account fairly quickly with TV codes or just by opening the app in another device in the same network. The option of watching apps as if you were scrolling through the TV listing is a nice touch and sense of having all content at hand. The homepage is a very powerful interface that will show you all the titles that you may like or that somehow are related to you, even if they are from different streaming providers. Sometimes you actually lose track of which one you're using. Another cool feature is that if you like streaming from your own network shares or NAS devices, VLC will be an app that you might find very powerful as you might be able to stream basically any video, file or video captured from your phone, family videos, movies, pictures and more. I did so with many movie formats in an impeccable way. Wi-Fi connection, as I mentioned, is not very strong here where I'm located right now, and even though speeds are ok, we were able to very quickly feel the need to use the Ethernet adapter, as we noticed very short pauses in the streaming. As a Fire TV is essentially an Android device, we felt compelled to use the developer mode, so we were able to download directly to the internal memory of the cube an app that was not available in the Amazon App Store. And not only we were able to stream from Netflix, Disney or Prime Video, but also from apps initially not available to us. Voice recognition for commanding your smart home from the remote or the egg microphones on top of the device just works great, different from the annoying echo shows. This will let you command everything in your home in an outstanding, very fluent way. Continue watching Hannah from Prime TV. Echo, show me my office. No complaints about this with the Fire TV Cube. Linking our Fire TV Cube to our TV or sound system was also very quick, so I just need one remote controller to turn everything on or off. It takes just a few minutes to set this feature up, especially if your remote control has to learn any specific option from a weird branded TV such as mine where I'm gonna use this Fire TV. Also, Bluetooth devices work very well. Boot time for the Fire TV Cube is very good. Not that you're gonna be turning it on or off, as that is not the intended use for these devices and power consumption is nothing to be alarmed off. Also, as in Android, apps are not completely closed and you may notice how quickly it may go from one to the other one due to this simple fact. The fastest one to go is Prime Video. I wonder why. Something very important to keep in mind is even though in some TVs streaming or direct 4K playback is not supported, once it starts playing the title it may find a way of optimizing for ultra high definition and switch to that mode even if video diagnostics shows 4K playback is not supported. You'll very soon see the difference. Here is where the cable plays a very important role and also the HDMI port you use on your TV, as you may want to use the ones marked with the audio signaling return ARC, or even specifically designated for 4K. 4K playback. Of course, if your TV just supports HD or Full HD, you will be able to use the Fire TV Cube with no problem. We were actually very happy with our experience with the Fire TV Cube, a device that pulls me away from my beloved TV boxes, as even Bluetooth keyboards or mice are very handy as useful with the Fire TV Cube. The option of connecting USB devices is also at hand. We hope this video helps you decide if the Amazon Fire TV Cube is the right choice for you. Thanks for watching this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel as it is of great support to us. See you next time.